Um, how's it going everybody? Adam Vordermark with the Order of Wrath here. I got a couple of my guys out here. We're going to start doing some instructional videos for you. Uh, just some kind of basic stuff and we'll get a little more advanced as we go and uh, try to get some, some good footage out for you guys and some good tips on what not to do, what to do, uh, weapon choices, all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, just to kind of help build up the sport a little bit. Um, got my buddy Zach here. He's one of our newbies. Um, Logan. Everybody knows Logan. Uh, Joe, and we got Mighty Mouse over here, Seth, um, and we're just going to kind of go step by step, show you some things, um, what not to do in armor, uh, your first, like, as a noob, as a new fighter, uh, this is just a lot of stuff that we see that's either really dangerous, unnecessary, or just, it's going to put you in a bad position, um, or put your team at a disadvantage in a melee. Um, and so we'll get started with the first one. We're gonna have uh, Logan and Seth step out a little bit. Logan, you can step out just a tiny bit, right about there. Seth, you're gonna come in from this direction. And we're gonna talk about the first point. Um, one of the big no-nos that I see a lot of new people doing is they shoot really low on people, like, like wrestling or something, or they're going for like a double leg takedown, or like they're just gonna football tackle somebody. Uh, and this is usually what it looks like when a, an experienced fighter has this happen to them from a new. Go ahead, Seth. That's about, about how it happens every time. Um, most experienced fighters are just gonna take that advantage and just push you straight into the ground, uh, especially if they're big guys like Logan. Uh, he's not massive, but he's, he's a pretty tall guy. He's standing about six foot, six foot two-ish? Six foot one and a half. Six foot one and a half. <laughs> so so uh, for him, you know, if you're, if you're a smaller guy, an average sized person, you try to go under him like that, he's just gonna use all his weight and just shove you into the ground. Uh, and the, the reasons you shouldn't do that are quite obvious. So go ahead and center back up. So the second thing um, that we're going to talk about is going high on a larger opponent or a taller opponent. So Logan, why don't you step out here again? Right about there. Seth, try to step over here. So a lot of times we see little short guys trying to jump up on little big guys or trying to shove up into giant people. This is what happens usually. Okay, so. You want to try it again and throw him all the way? Yeah. Try to knock him completely over. Seth, oh, jump at him again. Oh, you good? Good. Okay. <laughs> that was so. Match every time. <laughs> that was good. That was good. All right, go ahead and get back in line. So obvious, for obvious reasons, you know, if you come up against a much stronger, heavier based opponent, they're gonna be able to just throw you. Whether it's to the ground or 10 feet back, it doesn't matter. Um, but if you get thrown off balance like that, it just gives room for another teammate or opponent or whatever, you know, you back up, you might trip into your opponent, knock them off balance, take them out, or just get run by and thrown down by an, op an opponent. So you just wanna make sure that you're not trying to overdo it and try to overpower big guys in a situation where they clearly have the advantage. All right, so next one we're gonna talk about is uh, what we call a suicide takedown. I'm sure there's plenty of names for it, um, but we're gonna have Zach step forward and Logan step forward, and we'll just have you guys parallel the camera. So you just stop right there, turn this way, right about there. Um, Logan, you go ahead and get ready. So they're squared off. Um, Logan's gonna go for the easiest takedown he can, which is a suicide. Go ahead and do it. Okay, and that's where, go ahead, get up. <laughs> Go ahead and back to your spot. Okay. So obviously it works. Um, you know, if you have a very experienced fighter, they might be able to get out of that. They might be, you know, if they're strong enough, they'll be able to just kind of set you down and then you're on the ground and they're not, and so they can get back up. Um, it really just depends on who you're fighting against. But it's a bad idea to do that because you're leaving the rest of your team down a man. Yes, you took a guy out but you, all you did was even the numbers on the playing field. So it's just not a great route to go. Um, you know, if it's a 2v1 at the end and you know for a fact you're gonna be able to take him down with you and your opponent or your teammate will still be standing, go ahead and do it, whatever, sure. But there's always the, the chance that you're gonna mess up, you're gonna slip off the back of his helmet, you're not gonna have a good grip on him, he's gonna end up laying you down or reversing it or whatever, and then your teammate is stuck with a one-on-one -on -one and you have no idea who's gonna win that, you know? So just gonna have a good idea to stay on your feet and try to never go down. So another one um, that we see a lot uh, is, is unnecessary striking. We're gonna have Zach and Joe come up and demonstrate that. So Zach, why don't you come up there? Okay, so a good example of an unnecessary strike is gonna be your backhands. Uh, they're very weak shots. Like I don't care how big and strong you are in armor, you're most likely not gonna hurt anybody with a backhand. Joe, go ahead and show them what a backhand looks like. Yeah, it, it's he can hit he can hit pretty hard. Uh, 
and he can hit Zach pretty hard, but Zach's not gonna feel it hardly at all. It'll disrupt your vision a little bit, distract you a little bit, sure. If that's your angle, sure. Just a nice quick strike to the face, awesome, go for it. But repeatedly trying to strike someone with a back strike or any strike really with a one-handed weapon is gonna, it's just gonna wear you down. It's just gonna make you lose a lot of energy and your opponent doesn't have to even move. He can just stand there and watch you and laugh at you. So like Joe, go ahead and just do a big flurry of strikes at him. Punch him. Okay, so back. Okay, so if he just does a bunch of that and it really doesn't get anywhere, um, you know, you can even do this with two-handed axes and stuff like that. Uh, go ahead and do a, just a, do like three in a row at Joe's face. Okay, so he could do that all day long if he wants to, unless he's extremely strong or coming with a lot of force, lifting up, whatever. He's going against a guy with a really heavy base like Joe. Joe's just going to stand there. He's either going to shove you back and he, or he's just going to take it and let you waste energy. So it's just a good idea to, you know, if you don't think that that strike is going to put them down or distract them enough for your teammate to put them down or it's a distraction to set you up for some kind of takedown, don't, don't waste your time doing it. Just don't waste energy. It's not, it's not worth it and you're just gonna gas yourself out for the next round, or you're gonna gas yourself out for your team, and then what good are you to your team? <laughs> okay, so, um, a big point we're gonna talk about uh, now is is getting in the way of your teammates. Um, and this is a big one we see with new fighters. Um, you know, you're excited, you wanna get in and hit people, but if you're worried about, you know, winning, and if you're trying to do well for your team, uh, a good, really good idea is to understand, you know, who on your team can hit hard, what type of weapons are gonna put somebody down the fastest, things like that. So we're gonna do a quick scenario with that. We're gonna have Zach be the enemy. Um, Zach will even come stand right about here. And then Logan and Joe and Seth are all gonna be on the same team. Um, and we're gonna have Logan hold Zach. So go ahead and just get a good lock on him. And just, we're gonna imagine that he's pulling him back against a rail right now, um, and he has nowhere to go. So Seth's gonna come over here. And Seth's just gonna be ready to obliterate Zach's leg. He's gonna be hitting him up here. He's gonna be trying to make him move up so he can get a good gut shot on him or something like that. And then Joe is our new inexperienced fighter who's just ready to get in. Seth, go over to the left. And, and he's gonna get in the way of Seth's strike. So now Seth cannot, all right. So now Seth cannot effic efficiently strike the enemy without potentially hitting his teammate. And if Joe tries to get in really hard, and take up on the other side, he's not really leaving Seth a lot of options unless Seth moves all the way around here, okay? And I've seen a lot of noobs shift repeatedly. They'll, you know, all the way around to try and get just strikes in, which aren't gonna do much unless you know what you're doing with striking or you have a heavier, not heavier, but a, a you know, two-handed, more forceful weapon. Um, and, and all that does is it puts, it puts more hard work into your teammates who are trying to get the guy down as fast as possible to move on to the next guy or win the fight. Um, so all you're doing is getting in their way and wasting energy and time. Um, so good thing to do is go back to the original spot if you guys stay there. Um, is, you know, you want to communicate with your teammates. So, you know, if, if Joe sees that Seth is landing these big bomb shots and he's opening up Zach here, um, and he knows that he wants to stay out of the way, but be the best help that he can, he can say, Seth, I'm gonna get in behind him. So, you know, he's gonna communicate with Seth. Seth's gonna back off over here. Zach's, or, uh, Joe's gonna go in behind. And then Seth now has the option to completely smack into, into Zach here. And Joe, which there's a rail back there, remember? So Joe is gonna be attempting to get his legs away from the rail so he's even more opened up for strikes or to, to be put down on the ground or flipped over the rail, whether, you know, depending on the rail height that you're going with at whatever event you're at. Okay, go ahead and center back up, guys. Uh, another technique we're gonna talk about today um, is is the use of your haft or, or your, your blade even around somebody's head um, and the complications that can come with that. I'm gonna have uh, Zach and Logan come up here and demonstrate that. So Zach, you wanna come just right about here. Okay, so say Zach is engaging me or you know you guys, whatever, and his opponent, he's not seeing Logan. Logan wants to come up and put him out of the way or open him up for me or something like that. So he's gonna throw his weapon over him. Now, if he does this, that is right into Zach's neck. Um, some people's helmets sit up higher on their necks, just how it is. Uh, regardless of that fact, it doesn't matter. I've seen people with scales get choked out like this too. Um, it's just something you have to watch out for. And as an inexperienced fighter, you're not really gonna know what that feels like. You're gonna be too wrapped up in the moment. You're gonna be too excited. You're gonna be working you know, really hard and breathing really hard, breathing in your own CO2, you're not gonna know what's going on as, as much as if you had been experienced um, or had felt this a lot. 
So the best way to avoid this is to repeatedly try it in practices and you know put it on people, choke people, have them tap out, you know, have them do it to you so you know exactly what it feels like and then do it as many times as possible as you can to get that feeling because sometimes you can get it you know right on the edge of their helmet and it can get up a little higher right there and you can be pulling and they can lift their head up and it'll just pop right back under there. If you are trained to know what that feels like, you're less likely to hurt somebody, you're less likely to look like a jackass out there, um, and you're less likely to put people in danger in an already dangerous sport, in unnecessary danger, I should say. <laughs> um, so let's do one flipped, so you guys are gonna engage each other front, front. So Zach's engaging Logan right now, so you're engaging Logan. Okay. And Logan's gonna try to get up over him and pull him down. So go ahead and just slow-mo that, okay, stop. So as you notice, it went straight up under his helmet. That's where it's gonna go. Most of this stuff is pretty smooth. Um, you know, some people have those annoying Simon strap buckle things. Might get caught on that, sure, great, good for you. But the likelihood of that happening is slim. Um, and if you really yank down on somebody like that, you can do a lot of damage to their neck and spine and it's just not fun. Um, and as far as I know, it's not legal in any league. So, um, you know, to avoid, a good way to avoid that is aside from training, make sure that you're going, let's do one arm uh, under. Oh, that one over so make sure you have a shoulder in as well because there's absolutely no way he can get up under the helmet from here um unless he's really trying to be a dick um so that's a good way to practice it let's do um one on the side of the helmet um so let's go ahead and have you stand here All right about there so we're gonna have him come to the side and do it okay so a good way for this one is to make sure you have a really high high and low angle at the same time so that you know you're you're not horizontal with his neck so that you can go under the helmet you're high either angle doesn't matter this way and you're pulling it in tight to your body as well so that way he can't get out of it for sure um and you're not able to go up under his neck at all um it's just a safer way to do it safer way to control your opponent opponent and it's a stronger hold apart from the fact that when you're under the helmet they can't really get out of it anyway so go ahead and go back to your class. So that's just a good thing to practice. You know, practice that in armor. Do it a bunch of times so you know what it feels like so that you can not do it in the actual fights. Because you know, you're either gonna get disqualified for it, um, or you're seriously gonna hurt somebody and piss a bunch of people off. Um, and you know, just makes you look like a noob. So um, the next two uh, things we're gonna talk about that we see a lot is um, uh, what do you call them? Uh, hip tosses um, and, and like leg sweep type things that people just don't know how to do. Um, I don't care if you come from a jujitsu background or any of that stuff. I, I don't. I don't care. You should not be doing this as a takedown uh, unless a you're extremely experienced and b you've practiced it a billion times in armor. Because a lot of people come over from other sports and stuff like that, and they're like, oh well, I've done this before. You're not going to be able to do a lot of things in armor that you think you will. Um, there are a number of things you can do, but there are some things that just don't cross over. Uh, and if they do, you have to alter them and do them just a little bit differently so that you don't end up really hurting someone or yourself. Um, I'm not gonna teach you how to do them properly because this is a beginner video. I don't want you out there trying advanced techniques that you're just gonna mess up and hurt somebody or yourself. Um, I've seen one guy do it to himself twice now, uh, same guy. Um, and I, I mean, the first time I ever tried armored combat, I did it to myself. I chucked, uh, I chucked the guy across my leg, his arm, his elbow wing caught on mine, dragged me to the ground. I was wearing boots, I had no rotation. So my whole, my foot stayed planted, my whole upper body twisted, bang, knee gone, ACL done, replacement out for a year. So that was fun. So we're gonna show you what that looks like and what not to do. Uh, Joseph, why don't you come up and Okay, so Seth is gonna be attacking Joe. He's gonna have his, you know, his ax up ready to go. Joe's gonna move in on him close because he's got a one-handed weapon. He's gonna grab him, put his leg behind, and he's going to twist Seth over his leg. That right there is a massive no-no for multiple reasons. One, if your knee wings lock together, they can twist and separate or uh, uh, dislocate your kneecap or uh, ACL, MCL, all sorts of fun stuff. If he sits down directly, it'll go into the side of his knee, boom, MCL, gone. Uh, you're gonna have a bad time uh, and, and this is an extremely common injury and an extremely common way to get injured in this sport it is not something you should be doing i don't care how many russians you see doing it or how many pros you see doing it don't do it as a noob until you've learned until you know what you can and can't do in armor don't do it um, the other one 
is pulling someone across your knee. So, Joe, you're gonna stand like this right here. Back this way. Okay, stick me out. And then Seth, you're gonna come in at his side. He's gonna put his no, on the side. Straight at him. You're gonna put your arm around his head and you're gonna try and rotate him across your body. Okay, so right here, um, the first big thing that you'll see going wrong is Seth's knee is right into the side of Joe's knee. So that's an instant, really bad on your MCL. It's no fun. I've had it happen. It's not fun at all. Um, it's not a good way to take people down. And a lot of times what I see is when they do this, they'll, they'll rotate and throw the person to the ground. That's fine. I see a lot of people grab them and pull them down with them, which you're down then. So there's no point to doing it in the first place. Um, and uh, yeah, so if he keeps going, all it does is keep putting more pressure, more pressure, more pressure on his knee. So unless you have rock solid legs, you know, you're squatting a thousand pounds and you're the Hulk, you're not gonna be able to do this. I'd say, I'd say probably you'll do it a good three times out of 10 and then your knee's gonna start not having a good time. Um, but it's just not a good technique to utilize. There's a lot of other techniques to get people down that aren't gonna mess up your knees. Um, and the biggest thing you have to worry about with this kind of stuff is your knee wings locking against each other or your straps or something like that. That happens all the time. Um, one of our female fighters did it, what, a year or two years ago? Mm -hmm. um, two years ago, and she had it just get pushed forward and her uh, her kneecap just, boom, dislocated, done. Um, so it's just one of those things you really want to stay away from. Just stay away from the knees. <laughs> so um, just as a final little closing point, um, we're going to talk about situational awareness um, and keeping your head on a swivel. Uh, I see a lot of new guys, they want to just lock up with one guy and they lose sight. They get the tunnel vision. They lose sight of everything going on around them um, and that's just going to get you put down. So a good way, I'm going to show you a couple good things to, to help keep your you know eyes open. Um, Zach, you're going to come out here and do that with me. Let's go right here. Um, and then Seth's going to show something in a second after I'm done with Zach. So Zach is going to be engaging me. So, okay. so if he's here and I'm engaging him, okay, I can do many things. I can push him back and then look around and then go in at him, or I can hold him off however way I want, you know, keep his ax out of the game so that he can't strike me with it. And then I can look down underneath me, see if I'm clear there, take a step, I can look back. I can get up here in his face. I can look back under my other side. And that way I'm still surveying the field while I'm grappling him. But you always want to make sure you know where people are you know, throw a big strike, look away, come back, throw another strike. Just keep them distracted and stuff like that because there's not a lot of people, you know, unless you're a really big, strong dude, you're, you're not going to clean a guy off his feet in one shot, I promise. Um, you're not. <laughs> um, so you're going to want to keep your eyes open. You're going to want to be looking around the field because stuff like what we're going to demonstrate now can happen. So you're going to take a step here. And then, yeah. So Zach and I are engaged. I'm trying to distract him. All right, Seth. That can happen. <laughs> Not the cleanest takedown. Seth's standing at a whopping five foot four, and Zach is like six foot tall. So he had to get some ups there, uh, which is not fun to do in armor. But uh, but as you can see, you know when you get focused on one person, it leaves you open for all number of things to happen. Um, let's do the shots to the back one. So Zach, let's, let's let's show one more little uh, scenario here to where it's a bad idea to take your eyes off of everyone. So Logan, I want you and Zach to kind of grapple up a little bit. So we're gonna have Zach and Joe engage, and then Joe is got good situational awareness. He sees Logan back here. That's his teammate. He's waiting for waiting for him to have a good opportunity to come smash him when he's not paying attention. So go ahead and grab him. Go ahead and forward, move forward. So he's leaving Zach open for, for yeah, sorry. Uh, he's leaving Zach open for Logan to come in and put down the paint. So this gives Logan a billion different shots. Uh, depending on what league you're in, you know, you pretty much hit anywhere on him except the back of the knee. Um, so if you're put in that position, you know, and if Joe really wants to bend him over backwards a little bit, or bend him over towards Joe a little more, that's gonna open him up here for some nasty hip shots and stuff like that. So you really don't wanna put yourself in that position. Um, <laughs> so go ahead and stand back up. So a good way for him to, to remedy that is, you know, he'll come up, he'll check Joe in the face, so go ahead and check Joe in the face. Joe's gonna move back just a little bit. He's gonna take a half step back while Joe is falling backwards, and he's gonna look around the field. Okay, and if he sees Logan, what he needs to do is just get out of the way and try to put an opposing fighter in between you and the other guy. Go ahead. 
But yeah, so uh, there's there's some pretty solid tips for, for new guys coming into any any of the sports, really. Uh, most of the rule sets are the same for the most part, um, with a few exceptions here and there. Um, but yeah, I hope that's some good information for you guys. Thanks for joining us. And we're going to try and get some more videos out here for you guys to help smooth your intro process to the sport. So have fun.